Welcome to our game here, the Zodica Monthly Final, everybody. We have currently top 10 AMA versus Unbent. Two teams that are facing each other in the first round of the tournament. It's the Zodica Monthly Final, and we have an Oriel draft. For the first time, actually, Oriel allowed in a tournament. Of course, the Zodica Cup is not really an official Blizzard tournament. Usually, you uh, see those new heroes a little bit earlier in them. But right now, let's check out what these boys can do. You might not know the team names, but you definitely know the players. Hydra is playing Tychus here. We're Kronas on Leoric, Felu on Lunara, Roskmek on Murden, and Lunan is playing Oriel. And of course, we're going to keep close taps on him and his build. To the right side of the map, Unbent with Tank for the win, the French team with Thrall, TQR with Anubarak. We have Kieva on Falstead, not to be mistaken with Kova. Lothair on Rega and Arakan on Sylvanas. At this point, um, we already have up to the top lane, Lunara currently here in position. On level 1, it's the Swift Sweep that has been taken. The Sacred Sweep is actually like one of the biggest focus abilities that we are seeing on Oriel these days. And if you watch some of the Korean meta already, you've probably already seen Oriel being played and the focus on the Swift Sweep is pretty, pretty strong. It's a great talent to just like get a bit of wave clay and then of course then later on you have that option for the blind in addition to that, which is always kind of nice, especially when you're going up against auto attackers. That can really do a whole lot for you as well. Talking about auto attacks, Season Marksman now taken for Falstead as the level one talent going into that auto attack build. It has become so much more popular. And in this case, Oriel does actually have a couple of fairly decent heroes that she can target with the trade here. First of all, we have Lunara in the mix and Oriel Lunara is definitely something that we see a lot and in this case she's focusing a little bit more on uh, Tigers of course trying to get that extra energy here and overall Oriel is just really one of those cool just like utility healers and a lot of the support players have already said that they personally really like the way that Oriel feels right now because they have a bit more of an impact during the fights as well and uh, that is definitely something that is quite valuable since of course nobody really wants to only play that heal bot aka Tassada if you're looking at the rest of the talents, on the other hand, we are seeing again the reverberation taken. We have rotations happening between the mid and the bot lane, whereas up to the top, Kronas and Tank are currently doing their best to just annoy the crap out of each other. Right now, the shrine is spawning up to the top lane, on the other hand, and that is all of a sudden forcing the rotation up top. Kronos is not going to be back. He's going to cancel that. Like He's nearly on full health and full mana. There's absolutely no reason to go back home to base. With Arakane and his Sylvanas, there's of course always the chance of keeping Sylvanas in lane and trying to uh, take a few of the towers down, which in this case has not actually happened here. But the teams are now both on level 4 and that allows them to just like fight here straight in a 5 versus 5 situation. The bigger they are already taken, Roskmek already a bit careful here. And of course, Aurea immediately with that power heal here. Look at Lunan and look at the energy that he has. He's always in a position where he can just simply heal them out completely. And well, Lunara might be in a bit of trouble. Nice heal there again from Lunan. The poison is still in play, but Felu is able to escape. And Lunan, he gets a lot of energy actually, thanks to especially Hydra, who's doing a lot of damage on his Tychus and is currently trying to make sure that Lunan always can keep the team alive here. Overall though, Unbent is doing a bit of a better job taking the objective. And keep in mind that they run that Sylvana, so they can go for the Snowball. In addition to that, we are also in a situation in which this is still a best of one. We are not in the best of three stage of the tournament just yet. That makes things a little bit more difficult. Arakane down here needs to go back though. Sylvana is under a lot of pressure. And we're seeing the blue team starting to take a bit more control over the Shrine up at the top. The first Punisher is all of a sudden in reach and they are trying to go for it. Hydra with that damage output again. Look at Lunan. He's using the Swift Sweep here now as well to get a bit more AoE damage against those minions. But down goes Rostmek on his Muradin and that's a problem. Kronas trying to escape here with Leoric but Hydra has already taken a lot of damage too. Lunan is trying to keep everybody alive. But with 28 minutes on their side they are currently looking at a very annoying situation in which they have to actually retreat. Very, very annoying uh, for them for sure. And definitely not what they were hoping for at this point. They were so close to get the first Punisher, but in the end they can't really make it happen. So now the Punisher is going to push with Sylvanas at the top. As I said before, the Sacred Sweep is one of those things that is getting a lot of value here. Here's the radius increase after we just saw the, casts, uh, the cast speed increase with the Swift Sweep straight into the Majestic Span. 
And this is going to, this is basically like the standard build that you save from most Lunara players these days, at least on the competitive level. It's very, very popular, and so far Lunan has actually done a pretty decent job. But of course, one of the things that we still have to wait for is the level 10 ability that's going to be picked. Revive, not really seen all too much just yet. Like, it's a little bit of a question of how you play with the rest of your team, what kind of team composition you play. But right now, we have a level 7 talent advantage on the side of Unbent. And they're actually doing really well. They took the first fort out with the help of Lunara here, of course. Uh, that was one of the things that they focused... Oh, sorry, they, the help of Sylvanas. That's one of the things that they focused on highly. In this case, also, a bit of an adjustment with the build that we see for Fallset going into the Charged Up. So, that is actually quite interesting because we haven't really seen that talent too much. Apparently, Fallset just deciding that he doesn't need Boomerang for the wave clear, nor does he need the secret weapon for the increased auto attack damage. So, uh, he just wants to make sure that he has that single target damage thanks to his... Yeah, thanks to his lightning rod a little bit more. I haven't really seen that particular hybrid build just yet, but it's definitely kind of interesting. And we're going to keep a closer look on the stats that Fallset is going to get in the later stages of the game. Definitely an interesting approach that we see on his part. Now on level 7, the empathic link that we are now uh, seeing. So, uh, yeah, that's actually going to be... Uh, this is like the standard talent level 7 as well. So Oriel going straight into that, Bestow Hope is going to uh, do a whole lot of work when it comes to the energy level of her. So we are seeing them already starting to move for their camp defense, but they're not even committed to it yet. Since Leoric is still up at the top and they don't know how many heroes they actually are, they see that there's like four or five now, but they didn't have that vision earlier. So they didn't really take that risk to engage into a fight where they could have ended up at a numeric disadvantage. We see a cleanse taken on the side of Rhaegar. That's of course going to be pretty important here for them as well. That stun that we see on the side of Muradin in particular is something that they of course would like to dodge if possible. But the push pressure from Unbent is still ongoing and they are doing that quite nicely, especially down here at the bottom of the map where they try to go through another wall. We have a bit of a skirmish right here to the right side where we actually see Tank in a bit of trouble but nothing too much. Muradin was attempting to lock him down but didn't really get that chance. And now we're all of a sudden seeing top 10 MMA AMA in a lot of trouble uh, because right now they don't have level 10 they don't have their heroic ability the shrine is up again we have another punisher for the grabs and this time they can't really fight for it so they're simply trying to go for a bit more experience at the same time and in particular up at the top lane they are attempting to take a few of the structures down which is the opposite lane from which we are seeing uh, the uh, unbent team the red team currently push so that's one of the most important things that they're doing right now, trying to make sure that they're having a little bit more experience thanks to the structures that they can eliminate. But it's not going to change the thing at the bot lane, where we're seeing Arakane already moving in with Sylvanas, trying to damage the structures even before the Punisher is in play here. And it's all about the defense of the keep right now for top 10 AMA. They really need to make sure that they save this somehow, and it's definitely not going to be easy for him because right now they have to all move back already. We're seeing Kirva up at the top lane trying to just yeah, force a few of those guys back or like interrupt the TP back. There's the level 10 right now and they're starting to jump in. Oriel so far not with the talent taken just yet. The drill is in play and again we're seeing the Crystal Aegis. It's like the most common talent here right now if you're looking outside of Euroleague just for a moment, but the Crystal Aegis is very popular. The one thing that you have to say though is that oftentimes you just delay the inevitable. So it's definitely nice if someone is trying to burst damage one of your one of your heroes. In this case you might be able to buy a little bit more time for the rest of the team to join up and make sure that the target doesn't die. But it's definitely something where the opponent can play around it a little bit. So with this being said, we're having now level 10 versus level 10 abilities. But oh no, that's the tomb could be great, but our arcane unfortunately for the Auric already had the cooldown in play so that he could just simply wave out of it. It's not really too easy for them to make a play happen within Tomb. I really think it's the, great, it's the right choice to make, but it's not going to be easy to use it properly. The heroes that you have to catch are mostly Thrall or Rhaegar. The two Orcs are the ones that don't really have an escape mechanism, as Fall said with his barrel roll, Sylvanas with a haunting wave, or in the case of Anubarak with his Borrow Charge. Again, ah, uh, well, there's the silence with the Wailing Arrow, and they're jumping for Aurel right now. Nice heals already being used, but Lunara is dead, and that's a problem. Here comes the Crystal Aegis. But Hydra is still falling, only denying some of that burst. The rest of the team attempting to run away. Lunan is, wow, somehow still alive. But, well, as I say, it, he's also fallen victim to Unbent, who now start to move in. And the French team is doing so much work here. 
They have a level 13 already as is, and with that we are seeing them now with a double giant killer on the side of Falstead and on Thrall. We are also seeing, again, the Earth Shield. We have the Will of the Forsaken, and they are just absolutely on the move here. And with that, Sylvanas, of course, the momentum that they're building up is absolutely phenomenal. On 13, we haven't really even seen Arakane, uh, sorry, not Arakane, but Anubarak going for a talent choice here. And keep in mind that he's the main tank for the team still. So in this case, there's a couple of things that he could actually do in level 13. We have oftentimes seen a bit more AoE damage coming into play here, but there's also that Spell Shield and the Burning Rage available, and he goes for that additional clear and damage. Burning Rage is the talent. With a Failure up at the top lane, we're currently seeing top 10 AMA attempting to somehow get level 13. For them, it's a really interesting situation right now, and with interesting, I mean shitty, because <laughs> they kind of have to soak experience for level 13, but at the same time, they don't really have the time to pull that off. And we already see at the top lane the first few minions taken by Unbent, and it's really interesting to me that they actually push the bot lane instead of trying to go for a Hail Mary fight up at the top. Of course, you never want to fight with level 13 talents against you, and you're not really having access to those talents just yet, but with them losing another Punisher and up to the top already damage dished out to the wall at the keep, this keep is gonna fall. They are accepting right now that a keep is gonna fall and the problem is that it might not even be only a keep, it might actually more. They might lose the game here and they're risking that. They're absolutely aware of what's going on and they're saying like, yeah, but we might be able to make that play happen. They're waiting for a 13, they're trying to defend with it at the bot lane. The fort is being destroyed, that drops a bit more experience into their hands. And now they have finally level 13, which allows them to go into the healing static. A big power spike, of course, for especially Muradin. Yorick Wraith walks away, and we have another Sacred Sweep talent with a Blinding Flash. So here we have the Blind right now, and that could make all the difference. Maybe Oriel now in a position where the, she can make those plays, but this keep is gonna fall either way. I would be absolutely shocked if it didn't. Right now the stun is already a nice play so far from top 10 AMA. 13 versus 13 talents, the Mighty Gust immediately making sure that this is not gonna turn against Unbent though. Lunan is low, nice Crystal Aegis, the Punisher was about to take him down. That was a good heal too, Kronos on Leoric dies. But if you want one of the heroes to die, then it's probably him. The keep is about to fall, now the only question remains, is it gonna be Core, yes or no? If Felu dies now, that might be a problem. The Punisher wants him, but doesn't get him, and is now eliminated. So, the French team is starting to retreat, slowly and steadily. The blind is already in against Thrall, showing once again the utility of a hero like Oriel. There comes Leoric, he's back, Muradin is down though, and with the tank gone, that's the problem. Four more seconds until we see Entombment play again. Tank is low, but he escapes, and uh, yep, there's the Entomb, but Leoric still falls. Level 16 talents are by now also being played, that's the blood for blood on the side of the Nubarak. And we're seeing besides that now also the percentage damage thanks to the hunger of the wolf on the side of Rhaegar. When it comes to the healing power, by the way, just to give you a bit of an idea of what so far has been contributed by Oriel. She's at 25,000 heal. Compare that to Rhaegar, who's at tw uh, 34k. But of course, he's in a position in which they were dominating this game thus far. We're talking 10 kills against 0 right now. 16 versus 13. And the composition that we have for the blue team just doesn't really work out for them as much as they were hoping for. And that Lunara play against Draga is also not as effective as they uh, were uh, expecting. Apparently one of the reasons why they started to ban out Charism in the draft was that they were saying he has too much sustain and Lunara can't really do too much against him. Personally I kind of disagree with that sentiment because I really feel that while it's true, do you have the same problem with Rhaegar? So banning out the Charism, if you can't really put your opponent into a support chokehold and take the Rhaegar yourself, is not really doing a whole lot for Lunara. Lunara's idea is, of course, always to dish out that AoE damage and poison damage. I mean, if you don't have a good AoE healer against that, then yes, you can definitely put pressure on your opponent. In the setup that is being used here right now, Rhaegar is still having a fantastic time just out healing all of the damage that Lunara dishes out. Luna now, of course, attempting to just like somehow hold that line here, and it's definitely not easy for him, as you might imagine. Him with the heals, uh, have Muradin up at the top lane, he's currently just simply attempting to do whatever he can to keep his game, his team in experience range. 
but they need 16. And this shrine, they have to fight for it. 16 or no 16, it doesn't really matter anymore. This shrine, if you lose it, then it's over. Like, these punishers, they scale over time, and of course, at this point, if you lose another one, then you are just toast. Silence after a great Sundering. Very well played, and the immediate kill against not only Aurel, but also Tykes. Lunara is dead, and this is the end of it. A great trap laid here by Team Unbent. They played an absolutely fantastic match so far. Kierva moving in, pushing uh, Rostmek into a corner. He just jumps out, but they don't even care anymore. They have Sylvanas with this, and they're starting to push in through the mid lane. Could even just like forego that keep and go straight for core. They decide against it and actually try to take the keep out first, playing it super safe here in this best of one. They still have the talent lead, of course, and they're just playing this extremely nice. The silence on Oriel definitely made it happen because with her not being able to use the Aegis and also not able to just like burst heal Tychus, he was immediately taken apart and with the damage missing and then also just going straight for uh, Oriel afterwards, there was just nothing to be done on the side of top 10 AMA anymore. So right now the red team is just cleaning house. 14 kills against zero, a 2-3 level lead that they're currently using here. They just completely demolish their opponent. And yes, there is a bit of a trap attempt. It's 16 versus 16 talents, finally. So it might give them fighting chance, but only for a moment. Rosmag is down again. Muradin, no chance. And at the same time now, Lunan is being attacked too. I actually think they really just went in a bit too early. Lunan wasn't there just yet. Double kill against the red team right now though, and that's maybe a start. At this point, good heals from Lunan again. Kierba is in trouble and might still fall to the drill. Drill MVP right there. Triple kill. Leoric falls. They don't care. But yep, there comes another grenade. And this looks very much like we could actually see the first Punisher on the side of the blue team. Who just like locked down three kills. But they're losing also points on the core. And they're losing quite a few of those. They need to use, send someone back. Yep, that's 57%. But the fight over there is still raging on. And they need to wait until Muradin is back. He needs to take care of that wave that comes in. 52% against 100 on the core itself. Now on level 16, we have the Wrath of Heaven taken with the ability power, which can actually be pretty sweet if you want to make sure that uh, someone is getting even more damage in. But guys, keep in mind that... I, like, I'm not 100% certain on it, but as far as I could tell, Lunara, Lunar on his uh, Aureal was a little bit far away when Mirrodin decided to jump in, so she was never in range to really help him out. If they would have waited another second, they could have still fought for it, but Mirrodin might even have survived. The fight still turned in their favor, so they are currently the ones starting to apply some pressure. The only question is, will it be enough? Season Marksman, of course, has been completed on the side of Falstad. They are in a 5 versus 5 situation right now, but at least there's no level 20 yet against uh, top 10 AMA. Yeah, for now, we also see Oriol on 39,000 heal. Not quite on the level of Rhaegar yet, but still decent. Oh, Sundering and Mighty Gust. Zero value here. Nothing. There was absolutely nothing they could do with this. Now they're attempting to go for... Yeah, for a kill against Sylvanas. Muradin is dead again. He does a lot, actually, right now. And with him dying, now they fight in a very awkward position where even retreating might be a problem. Kronos is trying to help the team out. Yeah, even the keep is still surviving. Kierva flies in deep. Leoric is down. So is Tykes. And that leaves only two heroes. Looks like Oriel is trying to sacrifice herself. But with Lunara dead and now also Oriel being attacked, this is just absolutely going to be game. So they had a shimmer of hope for just a moment. But at this point... It looks like even the catapults alone are enough to just take this game home for the team in red. Very well done here by Team Unben. They did a great job here. So let's see how this is going to work out for them. Yep, this is, this is going to be Team Unbent advancing to the next round of the tournament. Well played here. Oriel so far not successful in the competitive scene in Europe here. But we're going to jump into the next game, into the semi-final of the Zodicup monthly final.